Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Devil May Cry 4. We're almost done with the jungle, but not before we get introduced to a kind of nothing new enemy. Uh, these are faults. They're kind of like wall masters. They'll spawn underneath you, try to grab you, and if they do, they transport you to a room with a bunch of chimera assaults that you have to fight your way out of. That's really all I have to say about them. They're pretty lackluster. What I do have a lot to say about is uh, something hidden deep under the surface in DMC4. I believe this also existed in 3, possibly as a glitch, that turned into a feature here. That is the mechanic of distortion, uh, which is activating your devil trigger on the hit stop frames of a move. Uh, that's the screen freeze that you see whenever you land an attack. It's, it's near instantaneous for a lot of them. Uh, Gilgamesh will cause a little bit more hit stop than other weapons. If if you time it just right, you'll see the screen distort with the Devil Trigger activation. And whatever you were doing seems to gain an extra hit. It's a lot more effective than just raw activating DT and then doing the move. But it's trickier. Uh, like, say the normal real impact for Gilgamesh, that uppercut, it's a three-hit Shoryuken. But if you distort it correctly, uh, which hopefully I'll do with the upcoming Faust after we deal with the Mephistos, uh, if you distort it correctly, real impact can hit four, even five times. Uh, it's one of the easier moves to distort because of the massive freeze frame right before the second hit lands. Uh, and I might be wrong, you ideally hit with it, activate DT, land the second hit, deactivate to trigger the uh, fourth and fifth hits. And then, uh, that'll wind up doing like 40% of the life on some bosses. Uh, let's, let's decloak the Faust uh, and try it out on him. Takes a little bit more work to decloak him, a few more charged shotgun shots. Let's try this out. Uh, I got a partial distorted real impact. I don't think I got the fifth hit. Uh, I definitely got fourth in there though, because I killed the Faust in one hit. So that's still pretty good. The timing for that one is really, really easy. Uh, the timing to make it just perfect, a little bit trickier. And you can do it on, on moves other than the real impact. It's just that that's the easiest one to do. Uh, there's an insanely good video out there. Uh, which I will link breaking down the different frames and timings you can distort on to maximize damage output for real impact. Uh, it's just an excellent insight into how that mechanic works with a lot of like good diagramming. So you have to treat the faults here as a stage hazard, unfortunately. Uh, they will... Ah, oh, man, that didn't go far enough. And he didn't walk into it either. Uh, trying to land the straight... Actually, trying to land the uh, distorted straight, which the community is nicknamed God Fist. Because it is, I think, the highest single damage move in the game. Uh, but between all the faults... And just chimeras running all, or uh, um, assaults running all over the place. They were not too happy to let me just sit there and do that. Whoops, it's not quite what I wanted. Uh, we'll just go ham with the dance cob. Oh, that that worked out really well because the other assault jumped into it. It's always nice when you can finish uh, the dance cob. Oh yeah. There we go, that was, I think, the full distorted real impact. Uh, it's always nice when enemies jump, extra ones jump into the end of the dance macabre. So yeah, there's God Fist, which is a distorted version of the straight for Gilgamesh. That's the uh, step back punch. I think that's the single highest attack, in, uh, highest damage attack in the game. Virgil might actually have some stronger moves, but I, again, haven't played around with him too much since Special Edition came out. But, 
all of the really, really insanely, like, obnoxiously um, damaging moves involve distorting. This is a fun arena. Nice open space with a lot of, uh, ooh, chimera-infested assaults. And we get some faults in here as well. So even less ability to just run around. Uh, we can even take some hits if we want to stop mid-combat and deal with a few of these. So we have fewer problems later. Because the faults in this area really hinder your ability to capitalize on knockdowns. Uh, it's usually your only real chance to get some damage in is when you shotgun them and knock them flat on their backs. So with... Oh, that's gonna land! Yeah! <laughs> so with the, uh, the faults coming up underneath you while you're trying to punish an enemy, uh, it's really troublesome, so you have to just really move around a lot. Trickster's handy here. Uh, just a regular double jump, of course, really good. And shark shot, shotgun shots. Aw, oh, you ruined it. Oh, and by the way, you can hold the uh, second hit of that. Oh, you're still not done. Ah, I was hoping I could get another distorted god fist on that. Probably wouldn't stay uh, flowers back long enough for me to do that anyway. Okay, so it's not up there. I think I want to be hopping up the cliffside. It's weird that we're still in the jungle even after, like, the really roundabout way we got to, uh, to Echidna's lair last time. That you still have to do the backtracking. Even though you technically traversed the entire stage through the fog walls and all that shit on uh, the last mission. It's been a little while since we've seen this. Oh, it's very nice. That's just the, uh... The raw style button. Uh, there is a secret mission there. I think that is one that... I think that's the one that Nero can't do. Uh, because it involves royal guarding. I want to say that's the one where you have to royal guard five in a row. You have to do the perfect royal guard five times in a row against uh, Mephistopheles or Faust or something. Uh, it's a really, really huge annoyance. And we tend to skip the ones that are more annoying than fun. And then, funnily enough, we're also, in the next mission, gonna come up to a secret mission that we've already done with Nero, that Dante literally cannot do because it involves bustering. Uh, and speaking of that next mission, we are right at the end of this one. Oh, I thought that was going to be an S for some reason. Yep, not many orbs found. That one has a very high requirement for an S in style ranking as well. To the point where I think you actually have to farm uh, respawning enemies to do that one. And we're back in the castle for mission 15. Three quarters of the way through the game. Starting to pick up some devil arms for, near, for um, Dante. And explore his mechanics a little bit more. There's a really fun, speaking of his mechanics, uh, there's a really fun way to fight an upcoming enemy. Trying to get a little practice for the timing right now, and it's not going so well, so this might take a couple of attempts. Uh, we also have an SS combat adju adjudicator. Uh, you can tell it's going to be SS by the number of flames. So for Dante, there's only going to be one combat adjudicator harder than this one. Uh, but because Dante has such a giant gigantic arsenal, such a huge moveset for all of them, especially the Swordmaster, it's really not that big of a deal. Uh, we'll get some straights in there, a little bit of work in with Gilgamesh combo B, 
Uh, combo B is tap tap delay tap tap. Oh yeah, no need to distort that because it's just a combat adjudicator. Uh, and we can probably finish this off with just like a dance macabre or something. Uh, after we get that up to S. Combat adjudicators are just a nice way to play around. Uh, mess with your combos, make sure everything's on point. And make sure to make sure you're you're varying things up enough. It's nice to have those those target dummies, basically. Uh, the only other place you get that really is Bloody Palace. A chance to just practice and go all out. Yeah, I knew this would take a few attempts. Blitzes are my personal favorite enemy in the whole game. Uh, I love the way they streak around. They're especially fast with Turbo on. Yeah, okay, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. Uh, so their gimmick is when you hit them with melee attacks, normally you'll take feedback damage. So they want you to pop their lightning shield before you move on and, and attack them. Uh, they want you to do that with a shotgun, but if you hit them and then cancel into Royal Guard at the right time, like this, yeah, only mess that up one time, you'll just parry the feedback instead. It's really, really cool. Oh, he, he's not going to stand. There's no way that's going to hit. Really want to finish this off in one blow. There it is. Needs a little bit more damage. So if you kill them quickly enough after you break their shield, uh, you will get an SSS. Otherwise, they go berserk, they turn red, they get much, much faster, which is very cool, but very dangerous. Uh, and eventually, they self-destruct. Woo, blitzes are fun. I love blitzes, especially when you fight pairs of them. They are definitely my favorites. Now that we're back inside the castle, the first floor is completely shrouded by the ice wall. So the whole first floor, the main foyer... Ah, uh, we saved a little bit of DT so we can get a triple jump up there. The whole first floor uh, is covered in ice. It's filled. Oh yeah, I already got this blue ore back here as Nero. Um, and there, there is now frost covering a lot of the doorways as well. So the layout of the castle has changed just a little bit. Uh, since we're Dante, we again cannot activate those Chira Blades that was exclusive to Nero. So we have to find a slightly different route through the castle and back to the main entrance. We actually have to destroy the source of all this frost, which... Judging by the fact that we just backtracked through the jungle to refight Echidna. Let's see if I remember. Hey, I did remember which one had the, the orb cache. Judging by the fact that we just backtracked through the jungle to fight Echidna again, you can probably guess what the source of the frost is. Oh, this is a fun room too. Aside from some of the camera issues caused by the balcony. Keeping the shotgun charged in case they decide to do uh, their big charged orb attack, which I think they're doing now. Yeah! <laughs> oh, there's nothing more satisfying than that crit. This is a fun room. Uh, this is just a... Oh, this camera is not doing me any favors, though. Ah, it sucks. Uh, this is a souped-up version of the same room that we encountered uh, Bianco Angelo's in for the first time as Nero. Except this time, we also had a couple of altos to go with them. No, you're coming. 
We got... Mm. Oh, it's gonna work, isn't it? Walk forward, walk forward. Ha! Oh, Gilgamesh is great. Oh, man. Like every other gauntlet weapon, Gilgamesh is a clinic on good game feel. The uh, increased amount of hit stop whenever you, whenever you even touch something uh, with Gilgamesh really, really sells the impact. I think we're clear on the balcony up there. Trying to go for most of the red orbs in this mission. I probably already missed a few. Uh, and this room is actually completely new, even though it's going to lead somewhere familiar. Uh, this room was busted open with a gyro blade that used to reside in the room we fought the Angelos in. Uh, the wall was busted open, so... Come down here, and this leads out to, I believe, the hallway off of the main foyer. Ah, uh, the large hall. Yeah. It's actually a busted passage behind uh, what used to be a painting. And we're really being railroaded by the fact that there's so many walls of ice around here. Since we have... We have so little room to progress, we can really only go this way. Uh, let's see, is there any red orbs I'm missing? Nope, not that way. And this is the only path we can actually go. Into the dining room again. Uh, that behind us is where we did that Buster secret mission as Nero. And was there a window here? No, I'm thinking of the other hallway. Oh, this is the Gyroblade room. One of them, anyway. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. There's the Gyroblade, so we want to be going over here. Into the dining room proper. This room, I think, is just a bunch of scarecrows and a couple of uh, big ones. Oh, you interrupted the uh, the overdrive. Guess I shouldn't have expected him to just let me sit still and do that. Get my shit in. Ah, it's not going so well. Being really, really sloppy right here. That's nice though. Uh, so, one of the unique traits about Gilgamesh, which somehow I haven't mentioned yet, is that every hit that you can do in its standard combos, uh, can be charged up. And a lot of its special moves can be charged as well. Whoop. That worked out pretty well. Uh, you can also do the old Killer B jump cancel into Killer B trick. So you can just spam it over and over. It's a little bit harder to do, I find, in Devil May Cry 4. Uh, like, the cancel window isn't quite so wide. I had to dodge that Scarecrow. Except finishing what I wanted to do with the big guy. Walk forward a little? That should work. That was definitely not a properly timed distort. But we'll finish him with a sort of real impact just for style. God, that's fun to do. Oh, there is one more in here. Not quite getting to see the full glory of the dance macabre, but that's okay. <laughs> I always forget the blades come down after they die. Almost always get hit by those unless it's pure luck. Oh, and here is where I regret not having Nero. Nero had that beautiful uh, level 3 exceed streak to just go across the whole dining table from end to end. Uh, this brings us back out into the large hallway to the other side of the ice wall. To the room with the, all the gyro blades. Uh, this is where we would have gone to go into the into the first floor courtyard to fight Bale is Nero. But that's also walled off with ice, so we only have one other way to go. 
uh, which is to make a right here. Which, if you remember, I believe brings us into the torture chamber, but we're gonna grab the red orbs ever- nope, wrong window, wrong mirror. Uh, the red orbs which have respawned here. <laughs> And then, yeah, this is the torture chamber, right? Righto, so that's gonna do it for now. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take it easy. Have a good one.